Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. Today I'm testing the new Geek Beast Plus from GeekLite. It's a unique fixture. GeekLite is a company that believes in innovation, and they incorporate several new ideas and features into the Geek Beast Plus. I love the way that they space out the bars and the diodes to distribute the light. It helps give the Geek Beast Plus one of the highest usable photon efficiencies on the market. But there is still room for improvement, and much to learn from this fixture. The PAR maps surprised me, and we'll have some fun analyzing them. But the most surprising thing was the fact that I had to take it apart with a hammer. Be sure to watch till the end. This PAR test and review is interesting. Growlight PAR testing is part of the Cocoa for Cannabis Growlight Guide. Our goal is to educate growers about horticultural lighting. We conduct scientific grow light testing and publish reliable, science-based articles, reports, and reviews for home growers. You can support our work by following our links and using our discount codes when you shop for grow lights. The Geek Beast Plus arrived in a long, heavy box. It comes disassembled. It will become an LED bar array fixture, but at this point, it's just individual LED bars and frame pieces. It is a large fixture with eight LED bars. The build quality does not feel as solid as many other fixtures I've tested, but GeekLite invested in other aspects of the build with top-end components. Below the bars and frame we have bars to mount the driver, the power cord, long cables, a hanging kit, short cables, and then the rather large driver. Let's see everything we got. Once it's all laid out like this, it's pretty easy to see how the LED bars will attach to the frame. I think this is a better solution for shipping than just folding the fixture, but we'll have to see how it comes together, and how it comes apart. The most innovative aspect of the Geek Beast fixtures is the way they space out the diodes. We'll see in a second how the bars are spaced with larger gaps in the middle, and along each bar there are more diodes near the ends, and there is more space between the diodes in the middle. I've thought a lot about moving the diodes away from the center like this. I'm excited to see how it performs. Let me put it together. I don't think this will take very long. The LED bars push into the frame pieces from the top. One side of the bars has connectors, and one of the frame pieces is prepared to accept them. As I click the bars into the frame, you can start to see the way they are spaced out. At the ends, the bars are closer together, and in the middle there are larger gaps. This Geek Beast Plus has eight bars so the difference is more subtle than the Pro and Mini models. Putting it together is super easy. You just line up the LED bar, and it clicks into place. The driver comes in a case with several switches and knobs. It looks more like a stereo component. But inside this case is a high-efficiency Meanwell driver. The switches are kind of cool. You turn the main power on and off with this switch, and there are UV and IR diodes which each have an independent switch. I'll show you the diodes when I turn it on. There's a nice dimmer knob, and you can also use an external controller. And this model is supposed to be equipped with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, so you can control it with an app. I'll use four ratchet pulleys to hang it up. There are little clips to attach them. The fixture itself is lightweight without the driver. It's easy to raise up. I'll determine the precise hanging height before the test. This is good for now. I just have to connect the cables. There are two cables that run to the fixture. They provide a short set for mounting the driver on the fixture, and a long set if you want to put the driver somewhere else. They have the nice self-twisting connectors. You just line the connectors up and push them on. On the other side of the driver, we connect the power cord. And then we need to connect the cables to the fixture. The cables are not marked, but the ports are labeled, so just be aware to get it right. I plugged it in, and I'll flip the switch. Wow, that is a lot of light. Let's check out the diodes. The Geek Beast Plus uses top-end diodes. You can select the Samsung LM301B or 301H for the full-spectrum diodes. The unit that I'm testing has a LM301B at 3500K. There is a total of 2,176 diodes. 2016 are Samsung full spectrum diodes, and there are 96 OSRAM 660 nanometer diodes, version 3.24.
The Geek Beast Plus also features 32 UV diodes by Sol at 385 nanometers and 32 IR diodes by Osram at 730 nanometers. I mentioned that they can be independently controlled. Let me show you that. We're talking about these little diodes here. I'll turn off the 385 nanometer UV diodes. Now I'll turn off the 730 nanometer IR diodes. I agree that it's not a lot, but they are there. The light they generate is outside the PAR spectrum, but I'll leave both switches on for the PAR test. The most interesting thing about the diodes on the GeekBeast Plus is the way they're distributed. You can see it looking up at the diodes, but I think we'll see it even clearer in the PAR map. While we wait for the diodes to warm up, let's check out the product listing on Alibaba. If you're interested in buying a GeekBeast fixture, the best deals are through Alibaba.com. There are some third party retailers, but Alibaba is the only platform through which GeekLite sells directly. There are some options. The app option should have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity, but I'll price it without that. The model I'm testing is the GeekBeast Plus with LM301B 3500K plus 660 nanometer. It's listed at $799. But a couple things about that. First, we have a discount code. Use code COCOGEEK for any Geek Light product on Alibaba. Second, the shipping for customers in the US will be about $210. There should be no other taxes or fees. So your total cost with the Coco Geek discount and the shipping fee will be just under $1,000. Down here they provide a bunch of data and statistics. I'm looking for the power draw. It's listed at 630 watts. And the photon efficiency. They are claiming 3.08 micromoles per joule. That's a pretty bold claim. Let's run these numbers through the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light calculator. This is our tool to help growers analyze grow lights. In the calculator on the right, we load all our tested fixtures. In the calculator on the left, you can enter your own data. I'll enter the data about the Geek Beast Plus. The power draw is 630 watts. If you use discount code COCOGEEK on Alibaba, the total cost for US customers will be about $1,000. And then we need to enter the data about the photon flux or the photon efficiency. The calculator gives options for different types of photon flux data. Most manufacturers provide calculated PPF data. If the data is from an integrating sphere test, we would select total PPF. And when we measure PPF in a PAR test, it is usable PPF. I'm going to assume that the data we got from GeekLite is a calculated value. They claim 3.08 micromoles per watt. According to the calculator, we should get over 1,400 micromoles of usable PPF at an efficiency of 2.26 micromoles per watt. Our friend Shane from Migro tested the Pro model, and it did better than this, so I think the calculator may be slightly underestimating the Geek Beast. The calculator expects it will fully cover about 22 square feet. I'm going to test it in a 5x5, which is the advertised coverage area. I have the Geek Beast Plus set up for the test. I found the hot spot here well off center. The maximum PPFD here is 1,000 micromoles per square meter, and the hanging height is only 26 and a half centimeters, about 10 and a half inches. This was a hard test to set up. I set the hanging height based on the maximum PPFD, and it was hard to locate the maximum PPFD. In fact, there are four distinct hot spots. I'm sure we'll be able to see that in the PAR map. I realized the hottest of them was there in the upper right quadrant during my first attempt to test it. I thought I had set it perfectly, but found values there at 1,010 micromoles per square meter. So I adjusted the fixture, and this is the second attempt to test it. Of course, I made sure that the fixture was centered, level, and square. Each PPFD reading is interesting. Below the fixture, the PPFD values are high, but seem randomly distributed, and the PPFD drops off significantly along the edges. I wasn't expecting that, but it makes sense considering how low the fixture is hanging. This is going to be a very interesting PAR map. Let's check it out. It is different, that's for sure. You can see the center area is full of 800s and 900s. Everywhere under the fixture, the density is spread evenly and it's great, but the PPFD drops sharply along the edges. This is an unexpected twist. The Geek Beast Plus is designed for excellent distribution. In the central region, it eliminates the single hotspot 
and creates a very uniform distribution of light. The hottest spot on the map is here in the upper right quadrant. There are secondary hot spots in each of the other quadrants. The even distribution allows for a low hanging height, which aids the system efficiency. However, without adequate hanging height, the fixture can't throw much light outside its own shadow. The Geekbeast Plus is physically smaller than the 5x5 area that it's meant to cover. As a result, the edge and corners do not receive adequate light. Some of you may be thinking it would be great in a 4x4, but you will not be able to safely fit all of this light into a 4x4 area. Shrinking the area does not just remove those squares. If the reflective walls are closer, all of this light will be trapped within the smaller space. In this case, there's no room for it. Although the edge values are low, the Geek Beast Plus produces a lot of light. Let's run the numbers. As we've been discussing, the hanging height was very low, only 26.5 centimeters, about 10.5 inches. At that height, the maximum PPFD is 1,000 micromoles per square meter. The average PPFD in this test is 660.0 micromoles per square meter. That means the Geek Beast Plus delivered a usable PPF of 1,484.9 micromoles. The power draw was 611 watts. So the Geek Beast Plus has an incredible photon efficiency of 2.43 micromoles per watt. This is the highest usable photon efficiency I have measured on a production model fixture. Much of the marketing is centered around the unique pattern of diode spacing and the even PPFD concept, but I think the most impressive aspect of the Geek Beast Plus is the photon efficiency. If I raise the Geek Beast Plus, we'll get better distribution to the edges and the corners. But when we raise the fixture, we lower the photon efficiency. It's an interesting trade-off. The light becomes better distributed across the canopy, but a little less light reaches the canopy. I still have the sensor down in the corner where I ended the last test. As I'm raising the fixture, the PPFD has come up from 224 to 386. But if I raise the fixture much higher, it will really lower the efficiency. I'm making sure it's still leveled and centered. The hanging height is now 43 centimeters, about 17 inches. The hot spots probably shifted towards the center. I'm just going to find the maximum PPFD during the test. The corners are still pretty low but the values along the edges are much better. As I move across each row now, the values go up until the center and then down again. The first test with four hotspots was different. The distribution of light is more normal at this height. There's enough distance for the light to spread out, but the maximum PPFD has come down quite a bit. And the bigger concern is that the usable PPF is also going to be lower. We will analyze the PAR maps and run the numbers to get a better understanding of the trade-offs. Let's check out the PAR map from this raised test. This is a much more traditional looking PAR map, but it's still unique. You can see how evenly the light is distributed directly below the fixture. The maximum PPFD is only 837 micromoles per square meter, but this entire central area is above 800. The next row out is entirely in the 700s. The next row after that is almost entirely in the 600s. A lot of the edges are now up above 500, but the corners are still below the 500 micromole per square meter threshold. Let's compare this to the PAR map from the official test. Here at the lower height, almost all the light is packed into the center area, and not a lot of light reached the edges. Raising the fixture allows light to spread out to the edges. There are two primary ways that light is distributed across a canopy. Hanging height, and the physical distribution of the sources of light. At the lower hanging height, the Geek Beast Plus depends primarily on the way that it physically distributes the diodes. It does a great job, which you can tell by looking directly below the fixture. But at a height of only 10.5 inches, it can't throw light out to the edges and the corners. When we raise the fixture, we allow physics to take over. Light naturally spreads out according to the inverse square rule. With more distance to spread out, more light is able to reach the edges. But the distribution also changed in the middle. Remember at the lower height, there were four distinct hot spots. These are caused by the physical placement of the diodes. At the higher hanging height, the four distinct hot spots merge in the middle. This is because the light has space to spread out. This map is more attractive because it is more even wall to wall but we lose more light to reflection when we raise the fixture higher. 
Let's run the numbers. In this test, the hanging height was 43 centimeters, about 17 inches, and the maximum PPFD was 837 micromoles per square meter. The average PPFD dipped down to 636.1 micromoles per square meter, so the usable PPF is now a little lower, at 1431.1 micromoles. Raising the fixture cost us a little over 50 micromoles. The power draw was still 611 watts. So at this height, the GeekBeast Plus has a usable photon efficiency of 2.34 micromoles per watt. This is still fantastic. I'm impressed with the efficiency as much as I am fascinated by the distribution. But I still have to tell you about some of the things that I don't like. Come with me to the test report page. I publish these test report pages for each fixture that we test. They include all the data and maps from the PAR tests and my written review. Here's the main data from the official test. You can find our discount codes and shopping links. The best deal for the Geek Beast are through Alibaba. And don't forget discount code COCOGEEK. In the US, the total price will be about $1,000. It isn't cheap, but 67 cents per micromole is a great price for a fixture that pulls 2.43 micromoles per watt. Below this area, you'll find the detailed PAR test data and the PAR map. If you have a larger space, you can use this calculator to determine how many Geek Beasts you'd need for full coverage. And below that, you'll find my written review. The Geek Beast Plus is an interesting fixture. There are pros and cons. It features top-end components and phenomenal photon efficiency. The efficiency helps the Geek Beast Plus to have a low running temperature. The highest temperature I measured on the LED bars was 46.2 degrees Celsius, about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. It has many cool features and interesting selling points. However, there are also some drawbacks. The unit that I received was supposed to have app control with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. However, I was not able to get the fixture to connect with the app despite several attempts and consultations with Geeklight. If you're interested in this feature, be aware that there may be glitches. The build quality is adequate, but it's not impressive. My biggest issue with the Geek Beast Plus is that once the LED bars are connected to the frame, there is no obvious way to release them. I had to contact Geeklight, and they advised that the only way to disassemble the fixture was with sudden force. They advised that I use a hammer. I wrapped a wood block in a towel. I have to strike the LED bars on the diode side. This certainly seems ill-advised. I'm going to let you listen to this. It came apart without anything breaking, but the disassembly could certainly be improved. Regardless, I really appreciate what Geeklight is working toward with this product line. They are trying new designs and pushing in new directions. This was a fascinating fixture for me to test. I've often thought about removing diodes from the center and redistributing them to the edges. The Geek Beast Plus shows the strength of the concept, but my test also revealed a potential drawback. I learn something every time I test a fixture. I learned a lot from testing the Geek Beast Plus. I hope that you can tell that my grow light testing is impartial. At Cocoa for Cannabis, we always put the grower's interests first. Our goal is to provide reliable science-based testing and reviews for home growers. We do not get paid for testing lights, but we do earn commissions when you make purchases using our codes. You can support our work simply by using our code when you purchase a grow light. I'd like to thank Ben at Geeklight for sending me the Geek Beast Plus to test, and thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Check out my other PAR test reports and Grow Light Physics videos. I hope you come visit us at CocoForCannabis.com. We publish articles, tutorials, and guides on the science and practice of growing cannabis. You can read our articles, chat with our community, browse the Grow Light test reports, and try your hand at the Grow Light calculator. Join us in the Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Challenges, and let's grow together. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending all of you 
grow or love.